Hello. Welcome back to the Knitting Expat podcast channel. My name is Mina. Welcome. Um, it has been a while since I've sat down to do a podcast. I think it's been at least two, if not almost three months since I last did a sit down podcast. Um, I have uploaded videos since then. I've done some, I did Vlogmas and I posted a uh, pregnancy vlog and stuff like that in the meantime, but it has been a long time since I've sat down to just share some knitting with you guys. Um, so yeah, first things first, I kind of gave it away. Although I, I think most people know by now, I am pregnant. I am currently, how long am I, how far am I? 17 weeks pregnant with our second child. And yeah, everything's going well so far, thankfully. Other than I am absolutely exhausted pretty much all the time. Um, but uh, but yeah, it's getting better. The nausea and stuff has finally worn off, thankfully, because that was, that was debilitating. I basically slept through November. I don't remember much of what happened in November other than I slept for most of it. Um, I'm still sleeping a lot. <laughs> I struggle to get up in the mornings. I'm having to, um, like I'll get up, help, get Layla ready for school and then I go back to bed basically. Perry takes her to school and my husband takes her to school in the morning and I just go back to bed and I sleep and I don't usually wake up until about 11 because and I have to set an alarm otherwise I will sleep even longer um but I'm just not functional in the mornings right now I'm just not functional and there was one day this week where I didn't get to go back to bed after I got up in the morning um I think it was Tuesday Perry had something he had to do really early in the morning so I had to drive Layla to school and then we had an exercise lesson session and then I had to take the cats to the vet and then by the time I got back I had like an hour before I had to go pick up Layla from school so I didn't get to have a lie down at all that day and I felt horrendous by the time the evening came around. I basically went to bed at like 6 I think um, and then I slept until like 11am the next day so I need a lot of sleep right now which um which is fine like I'm totally fine with that but it has impacted my ability to actually do stuff with my life and do stuff with my day and actually get anything done so it's been really hard to get back to work um so if you haven't watched the first trimester pregnancy vlog that I put up I basically found out that I was pregnant uh right towards the end of October last year and about a couple of weeks after I found out I was pregnant, the nausea, headaches, like all that stuff hit really hard. And it coincided right with when Layla got COVID. So she was at home for 10 days with COVID. Thankfully she was asymptomatic, had no problems. Like you wouldn't have known she was ill. Um, but I was basically bedridden the whole time. So poor thing, had to basically look after herself. I dragged myself out of bed long enough to make her breakfast, make her lunch and then go back to bed. And she would either play with her toys or come watch her iPad in bed with me. There was a lot of iPad at that those 10 days because like I was just not a functional human being. Um, like I said, thankfully as the month wore on, things got a little bit better. I ended up getting some medication from the doctor to help with that because it was really debilitating for a while. And then, um, like I said, things got better as the year wore on. But once I started to feel like that, I was like, you know what? I'm just gonna put a pause on work for the rest of the year and ride out this first trimester and then see how I feel in January and hopefully get back to work in January. So that's where I'm at now. It is now the 20th. <laughs> I'm starting to get back to things. I'm still, it's still really slow going. I'm still not 100%. And like I said, I'm still sleeping half the day away. So the amount of work I'm physically able to get done in a day is fairly limited at this point. Um, and I'm also incredibly thirsty all the time. So yeah, I'm not beating myself up about it. It is what it is, you know, it's only a short period of time before we know it, baby's gonna be here and um, and yeah. So I'm just taking it a day at a time and setting myself realistic expectations for what I can hope to achieve on a daily basis. If I can get two things off my list each day, that's like, I feel great at that point. I'm like, I've achieved. If I can do a load of laundry and one other thing or something else, like just two things a day is all I ask for <laughs> at the moment. Um, and yeah, so that's that's where the bar has been set right now. <laughs> um, so, so yeah, like I said, I'm trying to get back into things. And so here I am to film a podcast for you guys. I have no idea what number we're at, 160 something, I wanna say. 
but I don't actually know. <laughs> it's been so long. So I have a fair few finished objects. I have a new design to share with you, a new design that's going to be coming out to share with you, and another one that's still needs to be written up, but will be hopefully coming <laughs> later this year um, as well to share, and then some upcoming planned projects. Oh no, one more design as well. A few designs in the works. I'm surprised by that to be quite honest. <laughs> I've not been feeling super creative. That's the other thing. Since finding out I was pregnant my desire to knit and be creative has absolutely plummeted and a lot of that was to do with the nausea early on. Um, I have not been able to touch my spinning wheel since I found out I was pregnant. Just the idea of spinning and watching a wheel move round and round and round just makes my stomach turn right now. So <laughs> I've had to put that away for a while which is kind of sad but also there again it's a phase it'll be fine eventually um I just you know don't want to be sick all over my spinning wheel <laughs> I feel like that's a fairly reasonable reason ignore the fact that my hair is doing weird things um also if you didn't watch the vlogmas videos I now have short hair so <laughs> right towards the end of October just after I found out I was pregnant actually Layla and I went into London and I got a haircut. We went to a specialist or like curly hair salon and I got my haircut and Layla also had her very first haircut as well which was very exciting. Um, so my hair's a lot shorter now. We both donated our hair to charity which is something I try to do and um, yeah so my hair is usually a lot curlier than it is now. It's a bit limp and lifeless because it needs a wash and I just like I said two things a day <laughs> and I did a load of laundry today and this is my second thing for today so hopefully if I have some energy I'll have sh I'll wash my hair tonight but if not then that'll be a tomorrow thing <laughs> so bar's been set real low <laughs> anyway um so let's crack on with some finished objects I guess I don't know what order things are in so we'll just go with what I have here in front of me so first I have a couple of things for Layla so if you know I've had this sweater design ready for a long time in worsted weight and I'll talk more about that a little bit later because that's an upcoming pattern I want to talk about um, but I've also been um, I've also created a version of the pattern that's on a spreadsheet so you essentially input your own gauge and you input your own measurements or whoever you're knitting for you input their measurements and the spreadsheet essentially spits out the pattern for you and gives you like customized instructions for your size and for what you're knitting and for your gauge and I wanted to see if it would work for different weights of yarn as well and so I did a fingering weight version using hand spun for Layla to see if it would work and it did it's worked out perfectly and she wore this a lot we went to New York just before Christmas again it's in the Christmas vlogs um, she basically wore this the whole time this was her main jumper that she wore um, whenever we went out so she loves it it's nice and rainbowy both yarns are hand spun the the darker red yarn is um, John Arbin textiles fiber that I mean I hand spun both these yarns but the red the fiber was from John Arbin textiles I believe it was their pomegranate um, and the other one was a gradient set from Spin Jones that I purchased here in the UK. I think it was the Zinnia Garden set. It's a set she put together for Tour de Fleece a couple of years ago, so I don't think it's still available, but you can, I don't know for sure about that. Um, and then, based off of that, I decided I wanted to create a children's pattern with a circular yoke sweater design. And again, I think this would work, I haven't, scheduled this out yet I've done the spreadsheet version but I haven't done the PDF version of this pattern yet but this is the children's yoked sweater design so even though I've done it with all these different stripes and for this I used yarn by the little grey girl and um, you know there's tons of ends to weave in because you've got all these different little blips of colour that you're adding in you know the actual pattern is essentially just a stockinette circular yoke child sized sweater um you can knit it at any gauge you can use any weight of yarn you can decide if you want to do stripes or not you don't have to do stripes um if you don't want to weave in all those ends you can do it in one color you can do it in 10 colors you can do it as much with whatever you want and so i did one for layla and it fits her perfectly and i also knit a smaller size one for the baby which 
in the vlogmas videos I was saying was going to be for Layla's doll that she was getting from Santa and um, it turned out a little big for the doll which was kind of funny because it was intent like said, we're having a summer baby so she's not she or he I don't know the gender so if I accidentally say she or he it's not me trying to like it's not me accidentally slipping up I genuinely don't know um, they're gonna be born in June or end of June, beginning of July. They're not gonna need a sweater probably until a few months down the line. So I did it slightly bigger than a traditional, like true newborn size because they're not gonna want they're not gonna be wearing it immediately. Um so it looks a little bit big for this doll that Layla has, but at the same time it won't matter because the baby will eventually grow into it. And um yeah, so the baby one it actually still needs to be blocked so I only just finished it in time to wrap it up as part of Layla's Christmas surprise that she's gonna be a big sister because she didn't find out till Christmas Day um yeah so that was that that was really fun so that's a pattern that's probably not gonna come out till later this year probably autumn-ish sort of time I I have the spreadsheet done, I need to just go in and double check everything works and then write up the PDF pattern ver version of it and then it has to go through all the testing process and all of that jazz and all those lovely things. Um, so, and because I'm taking things slow, I don't know how long that's going to take and I have a few other things that are more of a priority to deal with at the moment than that. Um, so, it will. we will get to it at some point, <laughs> I promise. Oh, honestly, this year, and speaking about, like, um, speaking about sort of expectations for this year and things like that, I've decided that I am going to try and take a bit of a step back from work this year. Um, like I said, partly because I kind of have to, like, I just don't have the energy and I need a lot more sleep. <laughs> so, and partly because after Layla was born, I felt this huge desire or almost need to, like, keep working and keep doing something. And keep putting out patterns and things like that and I never really took any proper time off and that, that wasn't the healthiest choice at the time like looking back on it now and I realized that that wasn't the best way of doing things and that's not to say I won't still be releasing patterns and stuff my plan is hopefully to have a few things ready to go so that after the baby's born like either during the summer or early autumn things will be it'll be a lot easier for me to just release a pattern here and there because most of the groundwork will be done there won't be a huge amount that I need to do for them um that's the plan we'll see how that works out but I am planning on taking like some proper time off this time from designing and working and um and things like that just because it wasn't <laughs> I need to prioritize my family at this point in my life <laughs> um at this particular phase of life as well and also the other side of it is Perry's a lot busier with his work now than he was back then so um even though he works from home most of the time at the moment that might change come summer as things relax a bit more with restrictions and things like that so um so yeah I'm making the conscious choice to kind of like step back a little bit from things and then if I have the time or the capacity to do something then great but I'm not putting I'm removing that pressure from myself I put I remember putting a lot of pressure on myself when Layla was first born in terms of like trying to keep up and trying to do things and I'm just removing all of that this year that's essentially where it's where I'm at <laughs> with that um and speaking of designs this pattern is now finally available um this was released during December I think early December so during vlogmas this is the snuggly wuggly shawl I knit this using lavender loon yarn in the sport weight held double so it's kind of like a worsted weight you can just use worsted weight yarn if you'd like it's very flexible you can use whatever weight of yarn you want you can even just use fingering weight yarn on its own if you want a lighter weight shawl but this is like essentially six skeins of yarn in this shawl it's super heavy like I say heavy super dense it's super warm it's it's been my go-to shawl this whole winter so far like I've been wearing this constantly it's I had to remember to grab it from by the front door to bring it up to share with you guys um I wear it all the time it is so warm and so cozy and it's just got this really fun um cable that runs down the center and then the sides is alternating panels of garter and then this stitch pattern sorry if you can hear the train going in the background it's a particularly loud one it's a freight train i think that one normally you don't hear them but the freight trains are really loud 
um, and then it ends with some ribbing and an eye cord contrasting eye cord bind off and again this one is really great because it's completely adaptable it's written kind of like a recipe and so you can knit it as big or as small as you want you can use up as much of your yarn as you want i think i used up almost all of the yarn for the second and third color i had tiny amounts left over and i think i had maybe 10 to 15 grams of the first color left over at most if that um like very very small amount left over so that's why i really like about these recipe style patterns is that it allows you to use up almost as much as you know almost all of the yarn and you don't have masses of leftovers left and i think that's great <laughs> it's one of the things i strive for with my patterns is to not leave people with a ton of leftovers especially with accessories like shawls and stuff um right next i'm gonna go to my um <laughs> my blocking bucket as i refer to this this is my red bucket and then when I finish projects that need to be blocked they get thrown into the bucket and like this is what I use to block my knits in anyway like I just fill this up with some water and wool wash and soak my knits in here so it's the blocking bucket so first things first this is probably one of the oldest things in here is this skein of yarn um this is probably I think this is the last thing I spun on my wheel I don't even remember I think it's south down fiber yes I think it was like some random bits of coloured south down fibre from Spin Jones that I got, it was like a mixed bag of stuff and I kind of organised it into some sort of a gradient where the colours made sense together and spun it up into this to be some sock yarn. I think it's, I did it as a traditional three ply. Um, I'm not sure if it's too, it might be a little bit too thick for like traditional socks but it could be good like boot socks or like thicker socks uh, but it needs to be washed first so I can then measure it and figure out it's uh the yardage and all of that i can't remember any of that off the top of my head i know i have it written down somewhere um i have a couple of pairs of socks in here that need to be blocked so these were i think these i was knitting on during um so these was no it was these ones which one was it i can't remember i was knitting on one of these during vlogmas um, and then took it to New York with us and didn't even touch them and then finished them when we got back after Christmas and then I knit another pair in the meantime as well I think both of these I'd knit for like either like my dad or my brother that sort of size my dad and brother are similar shoe sizes so I knit them roughly the same sort of size socks um, but yeah so that's what those are and then another design idea that I had, and I did actually, this is what I cast on for our trip to New York because I wanted something super simple and easy to knit. And like I said, this is a very easy pattern. I don't even think I'm the first person to come up with this. In fact, I'm pretty sure I'm not the first person to come up with this. But um, I haven't gone looking for a pattern and just kind of came up with my own version of it. Um, and I do plan to write this up in a any gauge sort of method so again using a spreadsheet and you can plug in your own numbers and come up with your own um pattern words are failing but it's this cute little hat um it's entirely knit out of stockinette so there's no purling at all it's all just straight up knitting except for when you get to the crown decreases it is fully reversible <laughs> as well so it's essentially a lined hat i did this out of fingering weight yarn the idea was like i've got a lot of fingering weight yarn but i don't think fingering weight hats are really all that practical because for me anyway unless it's just like a fashion statement or something but for me a hat needs to keep your head warm and a fingering weight hat just isn't warm enough in my opinion maybe other people will disagree but i just find a fingering weight hat is not warm enough on its own so i thought what about a lined fingering weight hat lined with itself and then with a fold up brim so whatever yarn you use for the lining can then be the brim and i've got one end still out because what i plan on doing is sewing the crown like the bind off at the top um like put a couple of stitches to link the two ends together so they don't do this it doesn't like pop out like that at any point like they will stay inside each other they won't pop out like I said so um that's why that strand is still that end is still poking out because I haven't done that yet I'm waiting to block it so I can block it flat and not double thick 
and then if you want you can just leave it like this and have it like super slouchy there goes my printer every now and again it just whirls up and I don't know um, or you can have the brim folded up and it can be more like a traditional beanie or like toque or whatever this is actually even though it fits on my head it's probably a smidge tighter than I would like I think after a while wearing it it might get a headache but this fits Layla really well so this is Layla's size like a toddler small child ish size and then I have plenty of leftovers so I did a little one for the baby although there again this looks quite big for a baby but as I said baby's not going to need it straight away probably won't be until winter that they will need it and by then they're going to be about four or five months old they'll have a bigger head and I'd rather a hat on a baby baby be a bit on the looser side so it's not squishing their head too much um but yeah so we have a big sister little sibling <laughs> hat and Layla's you know she might want to wear it this way round and then yeah you have the option of changing which way round you have it so I just thought that was really fun and I managed to get two hats out of two skeins of yarn so that was pretty awesome as well um so again these need to be blocked and once I've done that I will sew the crowns together so they don't come loose um the only tricky thing and I say tricky in quotation marks because it's not really all that tricky at all is this pattern calls for a provisional cast on that's the trickiest thing about this pattern is that it has a tri uh, provisional cast on so it's not really all that tricky to be quite honest in my opinion my thoughts I'm planning on doing a version for myself using some hand spun so these, these are the skeins I've picked out of my stash of hand spun yarns so this one is some fiber from Felview fibers and it was a set of Rolags in the abalone colorway and I have about 485 yards of this so I've got a ton of yardage from a two ply and then this one is 417 yards of Spin Jones merino silk top in the frog colorway okay so that's those two skeins that I'll be using to knit myself a hat like one of those and oh I forgot to tell you what yarn I used for this so the yarn I used was by a Norwegian dyer called Lilla Rilla and I picked up the yarn at the Oslo yarn festival or fiber festival when I went back in 2019 um can't remember the colorway names they were in Norwegian and I have no idea what they meant I think one of them meant like secret garden or something like that which was like this one and then I have no idea what the green one is at all um in one of my Christmas vlogs someone translated the yarn name for me of the the multi um colored one but i can't remember exactly what it is i'll have to go back and check in the comments um so that's what those were i will have the yarn details for those yarns that i used in the actual pattern i just can't find the tags at this particular moment um and then this yarn layla we were up here last night i was i came up to grab something to knit on in the evening when perry and i were watching tv after i did her bedtime and so while she was brushing her teeth we came up here and for me to grab my stuff and she <laughs> went into my yarn cupboard and was like oh what's this one i'm like well, this is yarn that you picked out you picked this out at the um, when we went to Cornwall I think it was at one of the yarn shops we went to and um, she asked if I could knit her something with this so I think what I might do is I might knit her some socks and then with the leftovers I might knit her another one of these and then use a different yarn for the inside part I'm not sure I think this yarn is a little bit too scratchy for her skin she's very sensitive skin um, to have like on her head her, her like her facial her skin in general is quite sensitive she's fine with like woolly jumpers and stuff like that she's not had any issues with anything I've knit her but usually it's because it's a layer on top of something else it's not like direct on skin a lot of the time and I feel like this would be a little bit too rough direct on skin for her so she originally asked for a jumper knit out of this I'm like honey you have so many jumpers that I've knit for you that you still need to wear I'm not knitting you another jumper because you're just gonna you're not gonna have time to wear them all 
Um, so I'm going to knit her some socks and then hopefully a matching hat. And if I can, I will try and get that done by her birthday. We will see if that works. Her birthday is about a month away now. So, and I have another big project that I want to do for her birthday that I don't really know if I'm going to manage to get done. So we will have to see. Um, okay. So in terms of a upcoming design that should be releasing soon and I say should be and soon because I still the only thing standing in my way right now is I have not photographed it it needs photos and for that I need to look presentable right now I do not look presentable for photos so my hope is wash my hair tonight or tomorrow and hopefully fingers crossed if the weather holds out I can get some photos done over the weekend potentially we shall see um we have a fairly busy weekend this weekend so i don't actually know when we'll fit in probably end up just being out in the garden but it's this sweater finally i've had so many questions about this sweater and the one that you'll have seen me wearing all the time is the yellow one it's the mustard one which was my first variation first version of this sweater and it has a much more open neckline which whilst i don't mind I have found over the over the course of time wearing it again and again, I much prefer a closer neckline um, on this jumper. So um, I re-knit it using the same yarn, just different colours. Um, so the the yarn is by Loop um, Loop Fiber Studio. So she's uh, Stephanie, who is the owner and dyer and creator behind Loop Fiber Studio. She's really well known for her fiber bumps which are so beautiful to spin. I have a couple in my stash that I'm so looking forward to spinning at some point. But she also, a few years ago, started doing yarn and we connected, uh, we met up at Rhinebeck a couple of times and she's always been absolutely wonderful, so supportive of my designing. She's one of those people who's was like, I walk into a booth, we have a chat and she's just like, here, take a basket, grab what you want, sort of thing. And so she's incredibly supportive, amazing to work with. I felt, I've, I have felt so bad that I've been sitting on this design since 2019 and I'm only just getting around to publishing it. But in some respects, I am kind of happy that I've not released it until now because it's gonna be my first truly inclusive, whatever size you want to knit it, whatever gauge you want to knit it, pattern, uh, garment pattern. And I'm so excited about that. So this is called the Loop Sweater. It was kind of the working title, but now it's kind of just stuck and I can't think of another name for it other than the loop sweater. It's an alternate, it, the pattern alternates between stockinette and garter, but the pattern instructions also includes um, instructions on how to do the garter without any purling. So you're doing it all in the round, but then you have an option to do garter without purling, which is a really fun feature, I think. Um, the sleeves are a bit more kind of like up to you how you want to knit them so that's a bit more um, freestyle I guess and I, I like that because everyone's sweaters turns out that little bit different and um, it's been fully test knit now the test knit my test knitters have all done an amazing job and there again everyone's sweaters look slightly different because everyone tackles their sleeves slightly differently and I think that's really fun um, but yes yeah, so this was the second version that I knit and you've never seen me wear it because I've kept it clean and unworn <laughs> this whole time because I wanted to keep it fresh for photos and then I'm then I'm planning on sending this version back to Stephanie so she can use it as a um, booth sample at some point once festivals and stuff are a thing again but um, I still wear my yellow one to death like you see it you, if you watch vlogmas I was basically wearing it almost every day that and this were kind of like my winter uniform this year and a lot of the time to be honest because our house can get quite cold we have really good heating system but sometimes it can get quite cold even when the heat's not on and that jumper honestly is the thing i wear all the time and like i'm constantly wearing it so it's a really great one and as i said this is in worsted weight yarn you can use whatever yarn you want and this worsted weight yarn is very warm and i love it for that but anyway, enough gushing about it. This should be coming hopefully by the end of January, if not very early February. If I can get photos done this week, this weekend, it should be out by the end of the month. If I can't get photos done this weekend, then it might be a little bit delayed. It'll be, it'll be early February. Um, so we will see. We will see how that goes. Fingers crossed. 
Um, and then in terms of what I'm currently working on, not a lot to be quite honest at the moment. Um, in terms of patterns, like I said, I've got that hat that I need to write up. I have the little children's sweater that I need to write up. Oh, and I also want to write up a pattern for Layla's cowl. Um, if you know, you know. <laughs> There again, she wore it a lot during Vlogmas. I got a lot of questions about that pattern on Vlogmas. It is an adaptation from another pattern of mine, which is the Road Whipping Cow. Um, but it's knit at a different gauge and it only uses part of the pattern and stuff. So I was like, you know what, enough people are asking for it. I'm going to write it up as a separate pattern and um, release it as a separate pattern because so many people ask about it and I'm like it would just be easier if I could point people to a pattern rather than trying to explain how I modified it to everyone every single time so that's another thing on my list <laughs> of things to do it's that red cowl that she wears that has cables on it and it's like the perfect size for her and I much prefer cowls for children than scarves or shawls. I mean, Layla does have a shawl. She loves wearing them, like she loves playing with them. But in terms of practicality for wearing and for keeping her warm, cows are the way to go for children, I think, because scarves can fall off their necks and or it's like a choking hazard. You gotta be careful they don't tie it too tight or another kid doesn't pull it too tight or whatever. Like you, you never know what happens with kids. But a cowl is just perfect. It sits around their neck. You can do it the right size so it's not too loose, keeps them nice and warm. It's not going to get tangled up, it's not going to fall off by accident, it's just going to stay there and it will keep her nice and warm and she loves it. It's basically in the car all the time so whenever we need it she just pops it on and um, yeah she loves that cowl and I love it too so that was a win. So that's another thing I need to work on. Like I said I have a lot of plans, a lot of things I want to do, just not a lot of time to actually execute it so or energy I should say. Today's been a better energy day, but there again, I only woke up at 11 and it is now almost two o'clock and I have to leave in like 45 minutes to go pick up Layla from school. So yeah, like there's not a huge amount of time in my day at the moment, which is frustrating because um, there's all these things I want to do. Right, so the project I am currently working on, which has been a long-term project of mine, um, I always had it in my head that I wanted to have this finished for Layla's fifth birthday. And like I said, that's happening in about a month and I'm nowhere near finished. So there again, judging by my energy levels and how I'm feeling, I'm not sure that this is gonna happen for a number of reasons. First of all, let me tell you what the project is. It is the pinwheel scrap blanket that I've been knitting for Layla over the last couple of years. This is, um, again, an adapted version of my pattern. So I have a pattern out for the pinwheel scrap blanket where you knit these blocks using scrap your scrappy yarn uh, leftovers and stuff. And then you can seam them all together into a blanket. And I did it, it's designed in fingering weight because that's what most people knit their scrappy blankets out of, they use fingering weight yarn. And the first version I knit, I actually gifted to my mum for her 60th birthday. So that was a few years ago when we were in New York. And then um, I've been working on this DK slash worsted weight version for Layla pretty much ever since. And so what I've been doing, I've been using fingering weight held double for most of these blocks. Like this was a really fun one as well. Um, and sometimes I've just used worsted weight yarn, DK weight yarn, um, hand spun yarn. There's all sorts in here. The blocks aren't all like, perfectly the same size hello like this is all the you can see the yarn from the sweater i showed you in here in this block um they're not all perfectly sized but that's actually okay once it's all laid out and it's all seamed together they kind of even each other out which is really fun um so i had 42 blocks in that pile i'm aiming for 60 for this blanket i have another how many do i have here I have another one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Another nine blocks here that need their ends woven in. That's why they're still in the bag, because that's a lot of ends. Um, and I have enough yarn in here for two more blocks, so that'll be 11. So that'll be 53 blocks in total. I need to do another seven, but I have a slight problem. I'm out of scraps. Yeah, 
I am out of scraps and I've already repeated some yarns in these blocks so I don't want to keep repeating the same yarns in the blocks. I think I still have all the scraps from this project so that's another one two three four five six seven and that's another blocks worth of yarn there so that's 54 i'm six blocks short of yarn so i'm gonna have to figure that out <laughs> i'll figure it out um i'll probably just steal some yarn off of some other skeins in my stash um to like make it up or something i'll figure it out might have to buy some mini skeins um to finish it off but there again I don't know if I'm going to be able to do it in time <laughs> so wish me luck um getting the blocks knit and finished isn't the problem like I I would if I just spent this evening weaving in ends that would be done like that's not the problem it's the fact that I've run out of yarn <laughs> to knit the blocks out of that's the problem really right now um I could probably scrape together enough yarn for another block for another block but then I'm still five blocks short that's like 40 different bits of yarn that I need so I'm just looking around I could probably just pilfer off some of the yarn I have in my stash it should be fine I'll manage I'll probably have to repeat some stuff as well so that's okay but anyway that's my plan and then but I also want to kind of keep it a secret from her because she doesn't know about this project um so it's going to be basically something I only work on I will mostly work on this in the evenings and stuff because I need to use the energy I have during the day to try and actually get some work done um, rather than working on this as much as I want to. So this is where we are at with this. We're at, this is 51 blocks in this pile here. Like I said, I have enough for two more blocks worth of yarn in the bag. So that's 53, 54 with the scraps from this one. And hopefully I can scrape together enough scraps for the rest of it um but yeah that's it in terms of what I've been working on and stuff like that there's probably a few other things that I've done in between that I've not been able to share with you guys because I don't have the items anymore I know I've knit another couple of pairs of socks at least since I last podcasted because I gave my mum a box of 10 pairs of socks to take with her she went to Iran earlier this month um to visit with family and stuff and she's going to be there for a couple of months um so i sent her some socks to give to my cousins and family and stuff while she's there um so i know there's definitely a few pair a couple of pairs of socks that i've knit that are in that collection that i never got to share with you um but what else i can't remember to be honest i don't think there's anything else really that i haven't shared like i said i've not been knitting a huge amount in the last few months although showing in fairness i've probably knit a fair amount to be honest like, it's actually not it's less than i normally would let's put it that way it's not an insignificant amount i'm not like sitting here being like oh woe is me i've not knit anything but um by my usual standard <laughs> it is not that much and um yeah i've definitely felt a real slump a real knitting slump this last year and i'm hoping some of that will come back because you know when your job depends on you knitting and having some sort of creativity behind it it's a little bit worrisome when all of that just goes away and like you just can't think of anything and that's something else i've been struggling with is coming up with ideas and things that i'm really excited about i can come up with ideas but a lot of the time i'm just feeling a bit meh about them so i don't want to do them but um but yeah anyway i'm just rambling right now <laughs> so <laughs> um yeah what else has been going on i will be honest everything in my life right now has been predominated and dominated by the fact that i'm pregnant and incapable of doing much because i just want to sleep all the time um layla's doing great she's loving school she's um so excited to be a big sister she keeps asking if she can help with like doing the baby's bedtime and with giving the baby a bath and like all sorts of things i'm like absolutely you can be as involved as you want to be honey <laughs> like absolutely uh the timing's actually pretty good because my due date with the baby is about a week or so before she finishes school so even if i'm a little bit early or a little bit late Either way, it's going to coincide with like her being on school break for the summer holidays, which is going to be really nice. So she's going to be around with the new baby and stuff like that. So that'll be really nice. And um, yeah, I just had 
my um, latest midwife appointment yesterday which went really well. That's one thing I'm really noticing, there's a real, because I was talking about in the vlogs about wanting to not sort of compare but it'll be interesting for me to experience um, giving birth in the UK versus in the US and like the kind of prenatal care and postnatal care you get in the two different countries. I just find the overall level of care so far has felt really good and I've never and this they've always been like you have any questions call us whenever like it's no problem and you I will hopefully be back soon I'm not gonna promise anything um, my goal is and will be once a month <laughs> for this year as well it was my goal for last year but I think I pretty much failed by the end of the year like because I missed a couple of months but my goal is once a month for this year for podcasting and I'm going to try and stick to it. We shall see how that goes. Um, and yeah, I will see you guys again, hopefully soon. All right. Take care. Thank you for joining me today and I'll see you guys next time. Bye.